All right, to take a look at how you can use formula, we're going to start with a, a couple of flows that are part of an approvals process application. So with approval processes, the first part is where you define how the approval process should be handled. And then the second part takes place when individual records are then submitted into the approval process you defined. So this flow here has an approval process. And we have a entry criteria choice here. Right now it's set to all records should enter this step. So we'll keep that. And there are some other fields related to approval processes. So basically, let's see what happens when we run this approval process. We will submit this using a submit button. Now this is going to run a different flow. And it is going to accept this account into the approval process. And that's going to generate an email. And here is the email in the inbox. We can click on it, process this. So we've got this basic approval process, but let's say that we don't want all of the accounts to be processed by this approval process. Maybe we only want accounts that have a rating of hot. So, you know, ones that aren't hot, maybe they don't need approvals because they'll, they won't get certain resources allocated. So it's only when, an, when something's rated hot, does someone need to take a look at it and approve it for submission. So, Let's go back to our first flow. And this time, let's get to that same point. And let's say we're going to use a criteria or a formula. And we'll pick a formula. And you can see that the formula builder here is emulating a lot of the functionality of a formula field. And the way this is configured, all of the accounts, because this, this approval process is linked to accounts. So all the account fields are available for insertion. And we also have a whole bunch of functions and we've got operators. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say that only if the account rating is hot, should we enter the approval process. So let's go see now we've got, let's go back to our account. And we've got this rating of warm right now. So if we submit it now, then we should not see a new email come in. And looks good, no email coming in. And now let's go and change it to hot and submit it. And once again, it's getting through. So you can see how I was able in my definition flow to specify a formula that was that was dynamically evaluated each time the resulting uh, flow that uses this formula gets run. So let's take a look at how that's done. First, let's look at the flow where we created this screen. Okay, so this is the flow that is the part of that overall approval process definition process where we specify whether to enter the, the uh, approval process or not. And you can see that in here, we've got the formula builder. We look at it here, there's actually not many inputs to formula builder. Uh, the first here, context object type, is gives a chance for formula builder to populate that list with the appropriate context if you'll recall this is populated with account so the reason it's doing this is a, the the string account has been passed in as this context object type so you can dynamically instruct formula builder which object is the context object and which fields should then be uh, specified. And how that's going to work out is when this formula is eventually evaluated, if you've inserted any context tokens, 
like this, it will look for a record ID to have been passed in when it was invoked. Uh, so it's going to expect a record ID and it's going to expect that it's going to be an account. Uh, so it gives you a chance to basically, at definition time, put in these merge fields and then at runtime, pass in the appropriate record ID. Formula string is the main value of this component. This is what this component spits out. It spits out a string, uh, and that string is something that can be saved in uh, any record field for use in later runtime flows. So if you have uh, something like this, this is the string that's going to be saved. So basically whatever is put here is going to be saved as that, it's gonna be passed out as that formula string. And the fact that we have this uh, as an input means that we have the ability to pass in a default value for the formula. That's why when I went back to it, it was showing the appropriate string. Now supported system types is basically allows you to specify things like user and uh, profile. When you do that, that will cause additional choices to show up here uh, to be insertable. And uh, these are just shortcuts, of course. You can just type something like this. Uh, you can just type something like that and uh, the formula evaluator will basically be able for, for the globals, for these system variables like dollar sign user, it's going to be able to query Salesforce, find out the then running user, pull that information or the then profile or the then system data. So there are four or five of these that are supported. The documentation shows you which one system is there, user is there, profile is there. Uh, so you can add those in as well. And that's really all there is uh, to, to using this. And you have to, now you have to, of course, remember to do something with the string that's generated. In this case, I'm using the new automatic output handling. Uh, and how this is dealt with is in this particular flow, the formula string is extracted from this automatic reference to the formula builder component on that screen. It's saved in a variable called entry criteria. Later on, entry criteria is added to an approval process definition variable. And finally, that approval process definition is stored. So later on, when something runs uh, in response to that account being submitted for approval, this approval process definition will get loaded in. We'll see that in a second. Okay, so that's all what happens sort of at design time when someone who's running this flow is specifying something and making use of a formula builder. So now let's go and look how you can use these strings subsequently. So let's go and look at the flow that runs and makes use of this formula string. Okay, so when we clicked on that submit approval button, this flow got launched. So the account ID got passed in uh, and the approval process definition that uh, stores that formula string was retrieved along with any other approval process definitions for accounts. And we looped over it. And if the configuration says to check against the formula string, this action is called. This action, evaluate formula, is included in the same package as formula builder and expression builder. And you really need to use them together because that formula string that you generated back in the other flow is completely useless unless you've got something that knows how to process and parse it, knows how to assemble it and evaluate it. And that's where this action comes in. It's quite rich, quite complex, and it's all in Apex. So it's basically a formula engine and it can take the entry string and it does that right here. And it too has a fairly simple 
uh, set of inputs. You pass it a formula string and you pass it a record ID that corresponds to uh, the context objects. So this is so it's expecting in this case it's expecting an account ID. It it actually doesn't have the means to validate that. Uh, so you <laughs> you want to make sure that uh, your formula matches up with the record ID you're passing in. But basically it's going to take the record ID and process this. How does the processing work? There are sort of two phases. In the first phase there's this token replacement, and that's where things like dollar sign account dot name and dollar sign user dot username are replaced with their current value, and that's where this record ID is used. The goal of that first phase is to remove all of the text from the formula string except for the functions, things like uh, left and count, uh, and and all of those all of those functions that you can add. When that first phase of token is token replacement is done, the formula string is sent to the formula engine. The formula engine returns a value, and it basically is going to return uh, the formula value as a string, uh, and it will also give you some success and error information. And so you'll get a result. So once you have your formula string, all you have to do is call this action. And in this case, we're basically looking for uh, true or false. And so based on that, if it's false, then we, we, don't exit, we don't enter that approval process. If it's true, we do. We go on, all of this processing happens, uh, and the approval process is off and running. The third part of this package is the expression builder. Expression builder uh, is also available in this particular demonstration flow. So suppose instead of a formula, we want to use an expression. So you can see that there's a lot of similarities to formula builders and expression builders. Expression builders are probably a little easier to work with, a little less powerful. And um, the syntax is a little different, but basically uh, the end result is kind of the same. The underlying system is kind of the same. If you use the expression builder, let's go back and take a look at that. You may have spotted it right here underneath the formula builder. We're actually using the um, recently shipped conditional field visibility uh, to decide whether to show the one or the other. So here we're basically checking a value. If it's expression builder, we show expression builder. And if it's formula builder, we show formula builder. So we're getting some nice flexibility there on the screen. Expression builder is very similar. You pass it, you can pass in an existing formula string. You can pass in a context object type. And you can pass in some guidance on supported system types. The only other thing here is that you uh, can set the label of the add button. So the uh, expression builder will output the exact same formula string, which is quite convenient. Although they look quite different, they both spit out a formula string. So they both can be sent to the same for evaluate formula action. And in fact, if we go back here, one of the things you, you may notice is that the process for evaluating the formula string that is associated as an entry criteria on this approval process definition is doesn't care whether the original string was generated by an expression builder or a formula builder. In both cases, it's exact. It's generating a string that resolves. Expression builder strings are a little more limited in that they always will resolve to true or false, whereas a formula can return a value, it can return a number, it can return a string. Um, so for expression builder output is more limited, but the actual process of evaluating it is exactly the same. So good luck and uh, may your flows run smoothly.